if you're able to buy a top-end GPU, you can be confident that it will perform well for at least the next few years, and hopefully you should expect the best performance in recent titles. However, this isn't most gamers. According to the most recent Steam hardware survey, GPUs like the GTX 1060 and GTX 1070 are still quite popular despite how outdated they now are. The GTX 1060, for example, is the third most popular GPU on Steam as of July 2023. Today, we're going to take a look at AMD's RX 580, the competitor to the GTX 1060. However, to give it a little bit more of a challenge, we're going to compare it to the GTX 1070 across a number of 2023 titles. Hello and welcome back to Hardware Lab. First, let's take a closer look at these grey beards. Team Red's RX 580 was a direct competitor to Nvidia's GTX 1060. The RX 580 was a minor upgrade from the RX 480, being made on the same GCN4 platform, but with different stepping. It has 36 GCN4 64-bit CUs, which result in 2,304 streaming processors, 32 ROPs, a massive 144 texture mapping units, and an exceptionally good VRAM subsystem for the time. It has 8GB of GDDR5 on a 256-bit bus with a full 16-line interface PCI Express Gen 3. The RX 580 is surprisingly fully loaded with computing power and VRAM subsystem perks. It's a shame that AMD doesn't seem to have modern comparison in their current mid-end market. Whilst they do have some good mid-range cards, such as the 6600 XT, the reduced VRAM buffer could limit how long these cards stay relevant for. This excessive engineering is the reason why we think it's so interesting to compare this card, the RX 580, against the more powerful GTX 1070 in modern titles. The Team Red card, based on the 14nm Global Foundries node, launched for $229 back in 2017. With AMD's fine wine commitment to driver support, it has many gamers expecting a greater lifespan for this card. Team Green's GTX 1070, by comparison, launched at a much higher price of $379, a $150 premium. The GTX 1070 was positioned as more of a performance card than the mid-end RX 580. It's worth bearing that in mind when we review the performance results, as we are pitching the AMD card upper class from its original target competitor. The GTX 1070's Pascal architecture is based on TSMC's 16nm node and is typically weaker in computing. It only has 15 128-bit streaming multiprocessors with 1920 shading units, but the same VRAM subsystem as the RX 580, almost identical. It has 15 128-bit streaming processors with 1920 shading units and the same VRAM subsystem as the RX 580. All of the games were tested on a Ryzen 2700X with 16 gig of RAM using 1080p resolution and the settings were tweaked to try and create the best balance of performance and visual fidelity. RE4 is one of the games we expected to see some closer results between the two cards. The game typically prefers Radeon GPUs, and the engine also tends to dislike older Pascal cards. However, the difference between the two is still noticeable with the 1070 pulling clearly ahead. In Stray, somehow, both GPUs were able to run the test at playable frame rates on ultra settings despite their age. The GTX 1070 is significantly faster here though, likely because of the usage of DirectX 11, which tends to run better on the GTX 1070 than on the RX 580. 
The Last of Us, in general, is a bit of a disaster for PC gaming performance, even on modern GPUs. However, the old 580 and 1070 do seem to keep up in this game, with a comparably low gap between each other. Continuing with the Sony Porter titles, Ratchet & Clank surprises with one of the largest gaps we've seen so far. We don't really have any explanations as to why this is the case. Another disappointment with the game's performance is that to reach a playable FPS requires upscaling using the FSR performance setting. At 1080p, combined with FSR performance, this creates a significant loss in visual quality and sharpness and introduces a number of visual artifacts. The Callisto Protocol shows the first win for the RX 580, even if it is only a win in terms of average FPS. Minimum FPS on the 580 is slower, which could result in less stable performance and the sensation of more stuttering or hitching. Overall though, the ability to play on Ultra without any upscaling required is pretty impressive for cards of this era. In Ghostwire Tokyo, both cards provide pretty playable frame rates, even with screen space global illumination turned on. Impressive stuff for the age. The GTX 1070 performs especially well, managing to maintain an average 60 FPS, which is pleasantly surprising and makes for genuinely playable frame rates. Train Sim World 3 is a pretty stuttery game in general, and it runs especially bad on these older cards. That may be more of a limitation of the Unreal Engine 4, which struggles to render fast moving scenes, plus it is another DirectX 11 game that shows higher than average gap between these two cards. 
We were hoping for the RX 580 to close the gap to the GTX 1070 a bit more than the results we measured. But despite improvements over time to the RX 580, we can't help but think that the opportunity to catch up the 1070 has now passed. These cards are years old now, and despite many driver updates, the RX 580 is still slower than the GTX 1070 9 out of 10 times. However, we were surprised by both cards' modern day performance, especially the RX 580. It can still handle modern games at Full HD, sometimes on ultra settings. When that's not possible, using lower settings and modern upscaling techniques such as FSR, there is almost always a way of making modern video games a playable and smooth experience. We'll see how much longer these cards might last, but today they are still going strong. Let us know what you think of this short comparison. Are there any other second-hand bargain cards that you would like to see reviewed or compared? Subscribe and stay up to date with HL.